Hey guys, what's up? It's Joe Rady from Rady's Rides. We're here deep within Los Angeles, California for the media launch of this vehicle right here. What is it? Of course, it's that 2024 Mustang GT, this being the drop top convertible. But before we get into this sunshine top down muscle car experience, let's talk about what's going on here. The mighty Mustang, it's been around for years. We all know that. But what's fascinating is that Ford decided to take their own route and keep bringing that good old internal combustion engine power and performance. Of course, we have the GT behind us, but you can still get the entry EcoBoost power plant as well. Both of them non-hybrid, non-electric, but bringing, of course, that traditional real-wheel drive, fun driving experience. Now, when it comes to looking for a performance car, there's plenty to choose from, but one type of car that you seem to not be able to find as much today as maybe back in the 1960s when the Mustang first came out is a convertible performance car. So what I wanna find out is, if you're looking for a drop top, but you also wanna have that performance side of it, is the Mustang GT convertible worth the price over some of the slim competition, let's go ahead, let's dive into this new color. This seems to be like the 2024 official color that's new for the Mustang called Vapor Blue. Let's dive into this drop top and see if it is worth the price. Let's find out. Right off the bat, Vapor Blue, it's interesting. When we first brought it to you, this was inside the convention center at the Detroit Auto Show. Seeing it now, Outside gives it a total different experience, especially with having the top down on our convertible. Up front, you'll see the changes that they made. And you know what? When you're looking at, is something worth the price? What adds to the value? Definitely LED lighting. You're getting triple LED beam headlights, redesigned for 2024, and LED daytime running lamps, which are also your turn signals. Now, let me know how you feel about the lighting. I like the size of it. I'm not 100% sold on the chrome on the interiors. I wish they would have just left that like a flat silver. But let me know how you feel about that in the comment section. Another thing when we're talking about price that this has is the GT Performance Package. Lots of goodies come with that. Right off the bat, you get functional corner air curtain. So a lot of functionality, which is gonna bring value to your hard earned money. Even this splitter extension, this gives you downforce. This tries to stop air from going underneath the Mustang, and it also looks pretty damn good. Now, when we come across that front grill area, more functionality, more of that tough V8 muscle. You'll notice how they re-sculpted the front fascia. You're gonna have your aluminum pony going all the way back to 1964 and a half. So much history behind a badge and then you'll see the functionality like I talked about on the bottom. Now, when we rise up, that vapor blue, I'm telling you, has such a beautiful purple sparkle to it. It really brings attention no matter where you're at with this drop top. You're gonna have your functional heat extractor and then coming around the bend, what's really gonna dictate how much you're spending on a Mustang, one of those things are gonna be wheels. The reason why, wheels do so much for the look of a Mustang, or any car for that matter, but for 2024, you now have choices. Each choice obviously brings a different amount of value and price to the MSRP, but these carbonized gray, it's almost like a snowflake wheel. Maybe not the easiest to keep clean, but I promise you it's definitely gonna be a labor of love because they are absolutely stunning. So you have that carbonized gray satin finish, and then you'll notice that with the performance pack, look at that, it almost looks like the head off of a sledgehammer, that six piston Brembo caliper. You can't go wrong with the Brembo name. You got the performance braking capability, but you also have a pretty damn good looking caliper behind the wheel. Pirelli tires, new for 2024, up front they're 255 on the width. So you're getting a nice bit of rubber, 40 series on the sidewall, and we have Magna Ride suspension which has got to be one of the best suspensions in the business when it comes to performance, but also good ride quality. 
Now coming down the side, of course you're gonna get that 5.0 and it's there prominent with the aluminum. It pops off nicely with all the black font and that little red dot that's almost like putting the cherry on top of your muscle car Sunday. With the drop top, obviously the lines of the new Mustang fall perfectly into place with their pedigree, with the history. One of the things though that's still bothering me that I gotta give it a zonk is this right here. I wish this had a tonneau cover like you find on the Camaro. One of the things that bothers me, I'm glad they got rid of that button in thing. They used to have this cover that you would have to button in on the previous generation. Most people just left it off. It does lower down much greater on the new generation compared to the previous gen, but still I would like a tonneau cover just to finish it, especially like this big hole right here. There's a big gaping hole that would be nice to be all filled in. Another thing I wish they would have done differently, I gotta zonk this right here, a rear antenna. If you need the antenna for AM, FM, put it in the windshield or wrap everything into this trunk mounted antenna for everything else. This kind of just dates the car, I feel like. Pretend this wasn't there. It almost looks like a different car, doesn't it? Now, you're gonna see with the drop, with the drop top, that beautiful flare fender comes into the rear, those beefy rear tires, 275 on the width, and you'll notice you got Brembo's all four corners. Think about that. There are some cars that we've driven that are twice the amount of this car where they only put Brembo's on the front. You go performance pack, you're getting Brembo's on the rear. There's our beautiful tri-bar taillights. The more I look at this on the convertible, I think they made this a little too big third brake light is a little too large. Let me know how you feel about that. I feel like they could have shortened that quite a bit. And I would like the addition of a trunk lid spoiler. I think that would have just added a little extra touch, especially because this has the performance pack. Would have been nice to have a trunk lid spoiler, but we got our GT badge. And what's cool is it says right in here, performance. So when you go performance package, it actually says it right there for the people who are getting really nosy and have their magnifying glass, their Mustang magnifying glass, and they're checking your car out and then dropping it like it's hot because it is scorching hot here in California. You got your active quad exhaust, Ford Performance exhaust. We got 355 rear gears. And of course, you still get the choice of a six speed manual or a 10 speed automatic. But speaking of, automatics and manuals and everything else good. Let's pop the hood and see the heart of this thoroughbred in the Mustang GT. All right, guys, we got the hood popped. You do have hood struts finally on the Mustang GT. That adds to that value. Underneath the hood is really where all the value comes. You get that Coyote naturally aspirated V8 now putting out more horsepower. Now you'll notice you got twin throttle bodies a nice engine cover, you can see the intake plenum, and we have the bracing up front, part of the performance package, but you are looking at five liters of V8 goodness, 486 horsepower with the performance exhaust, 418 pound-feet of torque. It is mated to a 10-speed automatic, zero to 60 in about 3.7 seconds, quarter mile in 12.2 seconds, MPGs around 15 in the city, 22 on the highway, and the car weighs around 4,000 pounds. So you are gonna have extra weight because of the convertible, that just kind of makes sense, but you are getting more horsepower and more torque by getting the Ford Performance active exhaust. But while we go ahead, let's fire this horse up and hear it gallop away. guys we're in this drop top 2024 mustang gt vapor blue great color by the way and this new space gray interior makes me feel like a freaking astronaut now i know you're saying to yourself well joe the kids they graduated from high school some of them graduated from college they moved out i want to live my dream of cruising the pacific coast highway and also driving from alaska to florida I want to do it in this drop top convertible Mustang. How much is it? Very good question. With 2024 Mustangs, there's a cornucopia of different ways to spec them. This particular Mustang GT convertible starts at $47,500. There's only one way to go from there and that's up 
based off the options that you choose, but let me take you on a little tour and show you what Ford is bringing for 2024 to the Mustang, to the door panels. All new, space gray, looking fantastic. You got the two-tone, soft touch material throughout. You have, of course, your contrast stitching. I like the way it reminds me of the previous generations, but you could tell it's different. No gloss black to report, so I'm very happy about that. Door pocket is a good size. You could get a California bagel with an extra large smear of guacamole and a cappuccino in that door pocket. Then going from the door pocket to the dash, same thing. This is the only bit of gloss black in here, so I have to commend Ford for that. Love the way they kept the Mustang name on the passenger side. Look at the new materials. This is just really where they're up in the game. And then you slide on in, what do you have? Up top, you got your B&O center speaker because we have 12 speakers of audio pleasure in this Mustang GT. And we have a baker's dozen, actually a little bit more than a baker's dozen of infotainment system screen. Now I know this is gonna be the big debatable touch point. People are gonna be arm wrestling, tongue wrestling, doing all sorts of stuff to find whether this is good or not. This is your home screen and this is all new Sync 4. So you could choose Go Audio. I can make our map larger, all touch screen. My one zonk right away is I, I'm not a big fan of all the AC controls along the bottom. Now when I'm sitting here, easy to use. We're gonna have to wait and see when I'm driving. When I do that first drive, what is it gonna be like? As you can see, I'm even having a little bit of difficulty sitting here, but you do have your heated steering wheel. On this particular one, we have the optional dual climate and I'm very happy to report, ventilated seats three stages and three stages of heated seats but i gotta keep it cool in this hot california sun let me show you some of my other favorite features on this particular vehicle we go back to home we go into features itself this is where things get good you could go adjust your driver assistance which this has the whole ford suite of 360 protection but i'm going into my mustang we got the full graphics here. I can automatically adjust exhaust mode because we have the Ford Performance exhaust right by the screen. We could then go into track apps, acceleration timer, drag race lights. You could have the whole thing set up on your dash, even a lap timer or brake performance. Now, if you notice, this particular one has been tested. These are the tracks so far, Charlotte, Gingerman, and Granton. So I've been to each of those tracks, really gonna showcase what they could do to the chassis. I can't wait to drive this car to really see it do its thing. We got our drift brake and line lock, which I'll talk more about that in a second. We go back, auxiliary gauges. I love gauges. The more information, the better. If three's plenty, you got three, but watch this. With the press of the screen, now I have five. So nice to have all that great detailed information. We go back, we could go into custom mode, easily make your adjustments. Hit the helmet, what does that mean? We're going track mode, baby. Puts everything, but let's say you wanna do track, but you wanna change different things up, you could go and have that specific touch through the different modes, and I do like that. You go over to normal, and that's when you can make all of your different changes. Like say you want steering in sport, look at that, it highlights it, and you could make it that easy. So it is very intuitive once you get a hang of it. Here's the other big touch. Check this out. Lori's gonna show you the digital gauge display. All right now I'm in normal. Now I'm gonna go sport. Look at the gauges. Unbelievable, the technology that they're bringing. Clear graphics, look at that, with the tag that goes across the top there. You could do calm. Let's say you're stressed out. You want less information. You could have less information. Or you could kick it old school, just like when I was in high school with the Fox body gauges absolutely makes the driving experience that much more fun. Let me throw it into reverse. Backup camera, the resolution could be a little bit better, but you do have trajectory, which is really nice. And we have our backup sensors. Put it back in the park and we're, we're back. Sliding our way down, you do have a cherry red atomic fireball start stop button. If you want to get into your My Mustang mode, watch this. I'm going to hit home. You hit this, boom. Wham, bam, thank you, ma'am. We're right back where we started. Working your way down, USB-C, USB-A, 12 volt, wireless charging. You have your Ford Mustang key fob, just like before, and you can rev the engine with your key fob. 
This is the 10 speed automatic that's been retweaked for 2024. I can't wait to see what that drives with. You can also get a six speed manual only on the Mustang GT. If you go EcoBoost, it's only 10 speed automatic. More of that great stitching. Two cup holders, we got our drift e-brake. So this actually has different positions, but when you want to drift, you put it in that mode, you pull, and this thing, you're going to be just like Von Gittin Jr. doing the business, but I don't know yet because I haven't driven it. So I'm just going based off of Von Gittin Jr. and what he told me, but we'll see what this is all about when we do the first drive. Soft touch material, stitching, open it up. You got another 12 volt in here, and you could put, I would say about 28 packs of garbage pail kids. I still, my dad still has to give me my garbage pail kids back that he took away from me when I was in fifth grade because I was not behaving in school and I took him to school with me. He still has them. I bet you he probably sold them on eBay and bought himself something special, but I have to find out. And then we have the seats. These are the optional seats, space gray leather, stitching, nice bolstering, the big zonk, electric power bottom, manual back, which is a bummer. And it's a pain in the butt to move the back of the seat. As you can see, we have plenty of headroom because the convertible top's down. But even with the convertible top up, you still got plenty of room in here. But why don't you get your butt over to the business end? I got a flat bottom steering wheel I want to introduce you to. Come on over. Hi, guys. Here we are. Business time behind the wheel. You do have the Mustang name that lights up LED. You got three memory seat settings on the driver's side. Pedal box looks good. Aluminum throttle, brake pedal. It's just a dead pedal. I would like that to be aluminum, so that's a zonk. Seat controls, they are easy to get to, but like I said, just like on the passenger side, I want a power back and power bottom portion of the seat, but the seats themselves feel phenomenal. I can't wait to feel them while we're driving, but that's yet to come. Steering wheel, there she is. Get your hands all over her. You have your perforated leather, smooth leather, flat bottom, the Mustang badge, I like the way they have the mode switch on the steering wheel itself. You could even adjust your steering wheel sensitivity right here on the steering wheel. We do have plastic paddles to go up and down the 10 speed automatic. And you do have a manual tilting and telescoping steering wheel. And then you got that dash, 12.3 inch display. I know some people are gonna love it, some people are gonna hate it, but I'm definitely loving the graphics. I mean, look at this. They really did their work on getting the graphics spot on when you're going into the different modes. Especially, I wish they had Bon Jovi hanging out of the, the car in the slippery when wet mode, but I'm telling you, they, that's really where they put their money where their mouth is in all of this technology. People wanted more tech, you're getting more tech. The one thing that's missing is a head-up display, but why don't we get into the back seat and see how much room there is for people because we have four seats, which should mean that you can share the fun of this Mustang GT. Hi right, guys, I said I would do it, and here I am, back seat time. I'm glad it's in the convertible and not the coupe. I actually have the seat exactly where it was to show you how much space we have. And this is where Lori was sitting, and you can see I still got a pretty good amount of room. Back here, it's tight. I mean, this is not a place that I'm gonna wanna stay all day, but you know what? If we're cruising the beach, this would be a nice little vantage point to be in, and it just kind of allows you to share the experience with more people. You got the two-tone interior that looks great. We got the B&O sound system speakers back here, but there's no connectivity. There's no uh, rear AC vents. And the good news is, though, you do have a pocket on the back of each seat. So you could easily put, I would say, four IHOP silver dollar pancakes. The one thing that's a little bit of a pain in the butt is this thing here. It's just it's very, you gotta use two hands. It's very cumbersome to adjust this back. But what I wanna do is I wanna put the top up and show you that in motion, then we're getting to the trunk of this Mustang GT. All right, guys, I wanted to show you that top operation. Real simple, you're just gonna hit the button right by the rear view mirror. Top comes up, you can do this driving slowly in motion. Once it comes up, I wanna show you something. Come here, come on in. So when it comes to the top, the thing that I'm gonna have to zonk is this right here. They still have this ridiculous handle for you to lock the top in and then you go like that. Why they do that is beyond me. It should just come down and lock in itself because now to put the top down, I have to take the handle and do that. 
And to me, that doesn't make sense. But why don't I go ahead, I'm gonna put the top back down, and then I wanna show you how much trunk space we have in this convertible Mustang GT. Right, guys, time to get into that trunk area. Now, what I did was I left the top down on purpose because I wanted to show you that it does not compromise the amount of room. So you're still getting 13.3 cubic feet of space. The seats could fold down. And you'll notice on the passenger side there, you do have the subwoofer for that B&O sound system. Remember, we're talking about 12 speakers of fine-tuned audio power. And the fact that you have usable space with the top down, we lift up the cargo liner, you don't get a spare. You get a can of flat fix and an electric air compressor. That seems to be the direction that pretty much all the brands are going. The one thing that's good though, you could fit about five boxes of California Twinkies underneath that cover. Of course, filled with nothing but guacamole. Now I know you wanna go on throttle, trust me. I wanna bring it to you. This isn't the first drive, this is the first look for the media launch, but mark your calendar, July 24th and July 25th, both at 6 a.m. See, six, five plus one is six, a.m. Eastern time, we're gonna have the first drives of both the EcoBoost on the 24th and the GT with a manual transmission, wink, wink, on the 25th. So I better see you back here, but we need to wrap it up from LA and catch a flight home. All right, guys, it's been a great day out here in California. I know you're waiting to go on throttle with me. I can't wait to go on throttle with you. Be here both days, July 24th, and Tuesday, July 25th. That's a Monday and a Tuesday. Mark your calendar, 6 a.m. We're gonna be going on throttle, not only with the Mustang GT and the manual, but also with the EcoBoost. Put it down on your calendar, but let me know what you think. Is the new Mustang GT convertible worth the price at the end of the day for what they're bringing? I'm dying to find out what you have to say about it, but if you're new to the channel, you're on your way out, hit that subscribe button. I promise you it's worthwhile. Come back for more if you are a subscriber. Thank you for being part of the Radius Rides family. Of course, none of this would be possible if it wasn't for the hardest working videographer in all of the universe, Lori working that camera like a champion, because she is a champion. Show her some love in the comment section. Thank you, Lori, for all that you do. And just like always, guys, I'll see you on the next ride.